All right, we are back working on the Z again. Um, today, I'm gonna finish up a little bit more of the metal work. Um, I'm cutting some sheet metal out to fill some of these holes. So, this is where the uh, stock body harness went. And uh, after that, I think I'm going to take the sandblaster out again, as much as I don't want to and take off this OSFO coating. Um, OSFO is like a, fo a phosphoric acid that um, basically protects the bare metal from any flash rust or uh, any rust like that, but it puts a coating on here where you, you need to take it off before you paint because it could cause paint problems uh, in the long run if that OSFO is underneath your epoxy. I'm gonna start welding in these filler hole panels that I made. I've already done a few, you know, previously, but that's one of the new ones. And we got another one over there. Uh, and then there's a third one. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually welding this up because I want to do the, um, like the quick disconnect um, body harness and engine harness. Just, uh, it's going to look a lot cleaner and probably going to be more waterproof as well as if we ever have to take the motor out or the wiring harness you can just quickly disconnect it straight from the firewall in the rest of these holes tacked in these came out pretty good they're gonna look really nice once there's uh, some epoxy and filler over them too to smooth them out I think I got all the metal work that I wanted to do done before the epoxy so we're gonna start blasting and we'll see how that does taking off this uh, phosphoric coating. You can kind of see it, it's kind of like a white powder residue. That's exactly what you don't want under your new paint. So there is another way to take that residue off. I don't feel comfortable doing it this way, but basically you wanna re-wet it with the same phosphoric acid. It's gonna reactivate the acid. And then you can take water, sometimes soap and water, and rinse it off. Now, the reason why I don't wanna do that is I really don't want water getting into every seam and crevice of this bare metal body. You know, we just put uh, new floor pins in and we took a lot of time doing all this metal work. We really don't wanna see any, you know, rust coming out of the seams anywhere on this. So I personally wanna avoid putting water on this, you know, on the body. What I'm using a sandblast is for the heavier gauge metal, like the bottom of the car, um, anything with kind of like stamped metals, basically stuff that is tougher to warp with a higher pressure, higher um, volume of sand. I'm using this, um, I think it's like an 80 pound sand uh, blaster. Let me see here. Oh, 110 pound blaster. This thing works pretty good. Um, for the actual sheet metal. It's not recommended, but I'm going to be using a little siphon gun. Um, the siphon gun, you know, holds like a pound of sand. This is the bucket. But I'm gonna do it at like a 45 degree angle and try my best just to get rid of this, um, you know, the acid on there. But you don't really want to go straight on to sheet metal because it's not so much the heat of the sand that warps it, it's the actual peening of the sand. So the pressure of the little granulars of sand hitting it constantly at, you know, 100 miles an hour. So we'll do our best. I abandoned the idea of the, the little gun. I've used it before and I hated it and I still hate it. So I, uh, I'm just gonna stick with the big boy and uh, go at a 45 degree angle, you know, just make sure none of this warps, but it looks to me like it's doing a good job taking off the coating. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but you can still kind of see wipe marks from my towel when I put the coating on. So I'm just gonna have to really make sure I go over it um, a couple times and, um, you know, just make sure that that coating is completely gone. See, I didn't touch this area yet right here. You can really see it. It kind of looks like dried water stains. 
um, but then right here I did sandblast so you can see the difference but just got to stay um, organized and kind of work in one area make sure I get the whole area and then move on to the next just to make sure that I don't miss anything everything looks like it's coming out really good um, from what I can tell the Oswo is coming off it's looking really clean got the interior best I could um, all this was already previously blasted um, again it's just this is just to try to get that Oswo coating off yeah when you're doing this you definitely want to make sure you uh, don't just use your safety squints because you will go blind um, I like to use sunglasses a face shield gloves long sleeve shirt and then I'll also wear a respirator earmuffs because uh, your hearing will ring after listening to a high pressured uh, air nozzle next to your head for a couple hours and then I also use this um, it's kind of like a whole head cover thing it keeps the sand off your neck at least it helps but um, yeah that's just kind of the attire I wear when I do this and sand still gets everywhere it's this is probably the worst job ever but got to be done you gotta get some momentum Alright, I got my daughter here. She's helping me, making sure all the sand is back out of the body. Um, I got the car blasted to, I think, right where I want it. Um, it looks like all of the coating is off of it. Next is going to be dumping all the sand out, vacuuming it out as best I can, blowing it out of all the crevices, and then uh, prep sawing or, you know, surface cleaning it. And then uh, we're going to get ready for epoxy. Went ahead and blasted the splash guard and um, the cross member while I had the blaster out. Not sure if I can use the splash guard with my swap, but if I can, I'll use it. It's kind of cool that the part still had it. I went ahead and took the DA to the outside panels um, with 80 grit. I just wanted to make sure that these things were free of any sand debris that may have embedded itself into the metal. And um, yeah, that's all I did was just the, you know, the outside skin. And I'll do the same for the panels, like the fenders and stuff like that. As far as the inner panels, um, I'm just going to, you know, keep it toothed from the um, sand blaster. All right, we got it in epoxy. I really didn't film much because I really had to just focus on getting everything coated. And it was definitely a pain. Um... Just some minor issues here and there, which kind of slowed down the whole painting process, but um, getting the whole car in epoxy, you know, at one time was definitely a lot of work. But we got it. Um, everything's going to be painted in black as it is now. And then later on, the outside uh, areas that get the actual paint color that I'm painting it is going to be in white epoxy. But I have to wait until this... Uh, kind of cures a little bit more so I can tape it off. Everything that's getting undercoat and the inside is going to remain black. All right, I'm back out here working on the Z. Um, a lot of film was lost because my old phone took a crap. So got a new phone, going back at it. Um, kind of show you what we got done on it so far is everything's in epoxy. It's seam sealed. And um, yeah, it's just in its first coat of epoxy. Everything is sealed up. So super excited about that. Next thing I'm working on are these fenders because they're gonna get Raptor liner underneath. And when I go to Raptor liner the body of the car, I wanna do the fenders at the same time. 
So I'm just scraping off some old undercoating, gonna sand it and then throw some epoxy on it. I'm going to start sanding down all this epoxy with a red scotch bright. Um, there is a window to recoat this paint um, without any scuffing with the SPI epoxy. It's seven days, but I did have this car out in the sun a few times, so it's kind of dried out a little bit quicker than um, as if it were in the garage. So before I put any um, Raptor liner on, I'm going to sand it all down to give it a nice mechanical adhesion. Got these fenders all uh, sanded down. I had to neutralize the OSFO coating by re-wetting it with OSFO, scrubbing it with a scotch, scotch bright, and then um, wetting it all down with water and dish soap and a, you know, a rag, and then dry it off and then DA it with 80. Uh, so kind of a process. Then I put some rust performer in some of the tight areas where I couldn't really get the DA. And uh, these are about to go in epoxy as well as the car now. So I'm gonna tape off everything that I want to undercoat and uh, everything else is gonna be epoxied in white. All right, getting everything taped up. I'm uh, getting this where the sticky side is showing. So when I lay down the plastic sheet, I can stick it right to this tape and uh, then I can cut it out. So it makes it a little bit easier to, um, after you mask, cover things up. like holes or uh, body panels and stuff like that. All right, so it's getting late now. Looks like I got everything ready for paint tomorrow morning. Everything is masked, taped off, wrapped up, got the whole bottom wrapped as well. Um, everything you see that is black is gonna be white. Reason for that is we are going to be painting this car orange so white is going to be an easier color for the orange to actually lay out on um, another reason is when i actually go do go to do the um, body work i can use like a black guide coat and see my highs and lows a lot easier um, so the epoxy is going to be white and also the high build 2k will be white and then i believe before i go to actually paint the base coat i'm going to seal it with the white epoxy again Everything's looking really good. Gonna get the engine bay, the outside, as well as the fenders. They're all gonna be epoxied tomorrow. Next morning, got everything out here ready to go. Makeshift paint stand. Everything has been tack cloth. Uh, everything was degreased yesterday and uh, did a final tack cloth today. And I think we're ready to paint. All right, I'm pretty happy with how this thing is turning out. Uh, I've got everything coated in epoxy. And um, thanks to my ring camera, you guys got to see that time lapse. But everything's turned out really nice. 
gonna take the uh, gonna take off everything um, probably after it dries a little bit more and then we will start taping it up again opposite to undercoat the bottom so Good job. That's a lot of tape. <laughs> it's okay to leave it on the ground. What do you think? Does it look good? Yeah. It's okay to leave it on the ground. Sure. Go rip the rest off. Okay. Just don't touch the white. Okay. What a good feeling it is to have this thing finally sealed in epoxy and ready for body work. I've been working to get to this point for probably over a year now, on and off, and um, to see it finally at this stage, it just feels so good. Can't wait to see the undercoat under there. I've already got it scuffed for the Raptor liner. Um, I'm going to tape off and I'm actually going to use earplugs to kind of block off any threaded holes or anything like that but let me get this thing spun around we can see the underside of it so you can get an idea of where the orange uh, paint color is going to start and stop and where the undercoat you know, is going to start and stop so My plans are to paint the whole entire um, radiator support. Um, since I'm going to have a G-nose, I'm hoping that you won't really see the inside of the radiator support. Um, I don't want to... When you look at the front of a car, like, and you see the grill, you kind of want it to be black so you don't bring any attention to, like, your wiring and stuff like that, especially a black wire loom on top of orange paint. It just might not look too appealing. Um, but I think with the G-Nose, it's probably going to cover most of that radiator support. So I'm going to paint it anyways, the body color of the car. So that's going to be it for this part of the video on the Datsun build. Next video, you're going to see us put the Raptor liner on, as well as maybe do some body work. Thanks for watching.